Greetings and welcome to the Virginia Hospital and Healthcare Association's Patients Come First podcast series. Podcast episodes are available on VHHA.com and on popular podcast hosting apps, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora, and many others. Episodes of the podcast also air each Saturday at noon and Sunday at 10 a.m. on 100.5 FM, 92.7 FM, and 820 a.m. across Central Virginia. Please send any questions, comments, or feedback to PCFpodcast at VHHA.com. Again, that is PCFpodcast at VHHA.com. And since 2021 is an election year in Virginia, we're doing a special podcast spinoff series, we've invited every declared statewide candidate for the offices of governor, lieutenant governor, and attorney general to speak with healthcare voters about their campaign and ideas. Today, we're pleased to be joined by Delegate Hala Ayala, who is a mother and a cybersecurity specialist who represents a district covering much of Prince William County in the Virginia House of Delegates. She is seeking the Democratic nomination for lieutenant governor this year. And with that introduction, welcome to the program, Delegate Ayala. Thank you, Julian. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. It's our pleasure, and we appreciate you making a few minutes to be with us today. So I just gave a brief summary about you, Delegate Ayala, but Mm -hmm. I imagine that that only scratches the surface. So please feel free to add anything that you'd like listeners to know about your qualifications and background, and also make your case about why you believe yourself to be the best candidate among the contenders for the nomination for lieutenant governor. Absolutely. Well, Julian, you know, you did a good job. I am Delegate Ayala. I do represent Virginia's 51st District, and that's in Prince William County. And that covers Lake Ridge, Manassas, Occoquan, and a little bit of Dale City and Milksville. I've been a Virginian all my life and an advocate for children and families and women and families. I have been appointed to then Governor Terry McAuliffe to the Council on Women to advocate for Virginians. Our goal was Medicaid expansion. So that's something that really spoke to me. Um, I've helped a lot of candidates across the Commonwealth get elected since my first initial canvas for Barack Obama in 2008. And I stayed engaged because I've had lived and many life experiences that really I drew from when I decided to run from the House. It was historic, our races, as you've seen play out over the media. That wasn't my goal. My goal was to be that firewall between the Trump administration, who's going to wreak havoc not only in our health care, but every other equity within our systems here in the Commonwealth. I wanted a seat at the table so Virginians would not be on the menu. And so I fought, I won, and we fought for so many wonderful things, as we'll probably dig into. But after we saw the historic election of Kamala Harris, the first African-American woman and the first Asian-American woman to hold second highest office, and it was quite the picture last night during the joint address to Congress and the Senate. And Virginians need to see themselves and their politicians, and they need to know, I'm a firm believer, you can't be what you can't see. And they want to know somebody has their back. And with my lived experience and trials and tribulations and the obstacles I've had to overcome just to be alive today, I think speaks to a lot of Virginians. They resonate with that. They want somebody who understands their lived experiences and will be that advocate in the room with the governor, whoever she or he may be. I rose quickly to leadership. So I think I'm the best candidate because I'll bring their voices with me every single day and they know they'll have a champion and a fighter. Hi, I'm Catherine Gilley, VHHA Director of Advocacy Engagement. They say there's an election every year in Virginia, and 2021 is no exception. In November, voters will choose Virginia's next governor, lieutenant governor, attorney general, as well as district representatives for all 100 seats in the House of Delegates. Before that, though, there are party nominating contests this spring. On May 8th, Republicans will hold an unassembled convention with voting locations across the state to elect nominees for the three statewide offices. Participating in the process requires people to apply to be convention delegates with their local GOP unit. Delegates will cast ranked choice ballots to determine the nominees. Then one month later, on June 8th, voters will select Democratic nominees for statewide offices in a primary election open to all registered voters. That same day, voters from both parties will determine nominees in House of Delegates district races with intra-party contests. Visit the Virginia Department of Elections website to learn more about upcoming elections. And with those important elections on the calendar, your contribution to HOSPAC, VHHA's Political Action Committee, is more important than ever to support candidates who will work to improve health care in Virginia and support the critical work of hospitals and health systems. Systems. Any contribution, small or large, helps. Please visit vahospac.com to contribute. That's vahospac.com to contribute. Thanks. 
As you know, and you mentioned this in your previous comment, the Commonwealth has made great strides on improving healthcare access and affordability mm-hmm. in recent years. As you mentioned, uh, the 2018 passage of Medicaid expansion, which has now enabled more than 500,000 previously mm-hmm. uninsured Virginians to gain coverage through a recent law ending surprise medical bills, the recent approval of a mm-hmm. reinsurance program to lower rising health insurance premiums that Virginians pay, policies and actions mm-hmm. to respond to the COVID pandemic, and so much more. Obviously, the lieutenant governor serves and presides as the lead officer in the Virginia Senate. But I want to know, if you were elected to that office, how would you leverage the authority of that position to work to further advance the health care system in Virginia? Well, let me just touch briefly on my personal experiences. You know, I was working at a gas station, minimum wage, had no safety net. My son suffered from acid reflux and asthma and had other urgent medical needs and attention before he was born. I had no health insurance. I had no paid family medical leave. And, you know, the expansion of health care or Medicaid was something that really touched my heart. It was personal. It was beyond politics. It was beyond the rhetoric we've heard from, you know, our fellow Republicans who just would vote against it. And finally, Virginians were provided access to affordable health care. And that meant so much to me. On my platform as lieutenant governor, because I bring these lived experiences to the space, of healthcare and know and talk to families every day from my district and presiding district and all over the Commonwealth. And as being appointed on the Council of Women, we still work on engaging Virginians about the need for affordable access to healthcare. So in my position as Lieutenant Governor, because I have these relationships, because I have relationships with every gubernatorial candidate that's running, I'll be in the room. I will be that voice. I want to be the last woman in the room with the governor, whoever she or he may be. And I want to be advocating for every Virginian for affordable health care, transparency in drugs, uh, mental health care, promoting, you know, equity in our health care, because we know black and brown Virginians are, have been, you know, disproportionately impacted either from lack of access or not having the support that they need and or addressing some pre-existing conditions. So as the first woman of color, Lieutenant Governor, I will promote equity. I will promote affordability and modernization and protecting Virginians. At the heart of the matter is that when you have a voice in the space that are making these decisions and the lived experiences. That story is so powerful. It's not something that we just talk about. It's a lived experience. Well, I appreciate you sharing that perspective. If people who are listening want to learn more about you and your candidacy, is there a website or social media mm-hmm. accounts where you direct them to find out more about you and potentially get engaged if they are so inclined? Absolutely. It's Hala for Virginia, F-O-R, Virginia spelled out. And my first name is H-A-L-A. And this is an exciting race, so I hope whoever's listening today, you know, come check us out. We're passionate about the Commonwealth. We're passionate about health care and equitability, reproductive health care. And we want to afford every Virginian an opportunity to get the access they need and the opportunity they deserve. And we should point out for the benefit of listeners that on the Democratic side, there is a June 8th primary election to determine the nominees for the offices of governor, lieutenant governor, and attorney general. And we should also point out that in Virginia, early voting in that contest has actually already begun. So people who are registered and eligible voters in Virginia can begin to participate by casting a ballot now or can cast a ballot on June 8th uh, on the date of the actual primary election. So just want to point Mm -hmm. that note out. And then And finally, Delegate Ayala, to close out the podcast, a question that we ask all of our guests here on VHHA's Mm -hmm. Patients Come First podcast. It's a fun personal one, and it's this. If you were stranded on a deserted island, what one book, one album, and one movie would you take with you to keep yourself company? We will spot you a copy of the religious text of your choice. So other than that, (laughs) what, what are your three entertainment survival kit picks? Okay, I read often, but haven't been able to read as much as possible. So I would like to take with me, which resonated with me, A Promised Land, Barack Obama's book. Mm -hmm. So I'll take that book with me. And it's thick, so it'll take me some time to get through it. The one movie, I have a lot of favorites. So I like You've Got Mail. It's an oldie, but Mm -hmm. goodie. Mm -hmm. I I only know him through the... uh... You're not going to believe this. Oh, let me guess. (sighs) Through the internet? Yes. Hmm. You've got mail. Yes. 
Those are very powerful words. Yes. With my background in cybersecurity, I like to watch the nuances of AOL and some of the quirkiness in it. The it's old dial-up. Great movie. Love the old dial-up sound. <laughs> <laughs> and and the one piece of music I love uh, hip hop. But if I wanted to listen to something all the time, I am a big fan of Aretha Franklin. So I would bring her album with me, The Greatest Hits. Put some respect on her name. Well, yes. with that, that is going to bring us to the close of another episode of the Virginia Hospital and Healthcare Association's Patients Come First podcast. If you like what you heard, please make sure to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and subscribe so that you know when new episodes are available. And we want to once again thank our guest, Delegate Hala Ayala, who is a Democratic candidate for Lieutenant Governor of Virginia, for joining us today. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Julian. Thank you for having me. 